want to thank our sponsor, My Green Mattress. And now it's My Green Mattress. I am so happy to have this. So much so, I can't even get off of it right now. I want to thank you all so much. I'm so grateful. Temperature regulated, beautiful mattress. It's got just enough spring. It has enough cushion. And here's the good part. It's actually good for you. It's eco-friendly, no chemicals, a wonderful little bounce. And uh, my kind of company, because it's family owned, get a warranty, why else would you not get my green mattress no not my green mattress it'll be your green mattress but you go to my green mattress there are sponsors i'm so appreciative and this is something you're going to want to have too hi lisa hi how are you i'm fantastic how are you doing today i'm fantastic today what is you, today tuesday happy tuesday yeah it doesn't matter <laughs> it doesn't matter no, when you get to be our age when you get to be have children you have these careers all the days blend don't they i mean they do. I, I i miss the days when i was a kid you put remember you put the date at the top of your paper your name and the yeah. date at the top of the paper I miss those days. <laughs> <laughs> you knew what day it was? <laughs> there's, so, there's so many things I miss about being a child, but that's one of them. The simple things in life where you just, you had, you had to know what the day was. That was, that was part what of the year was. <laughs> yeah. And then the year or two, you put the, sometimes I get the, even that mixed up. So, I know. yeah. I know. And uh, so, so nice to have you. I'm actually meeting you for the first time. I, I know we talked a little bit. Hi, nice uh, to meet you on uh on text message and private message and stuff like that but um we didn't get too deep today we go deep let's do it i love going I deep it's my, like it's to go my deep. specialty i also love to go experiential as opposed to theory i find that um have you found this to be true lisa in your business that sometimes people operate with theoretical the theoretical answers but it's really not, they haven't experienced those answers i always respect people that have more you, tell me what you've done to gain the wisdom here you know and your yeah. failures included now do you have some failures that you found and basically you found maybe a theory not to be true or like like the timeout <laughs> I don't think time out. I, I put myself in timeouts all the time. Right? <laughs> You're talking about <laughs> time out. I need to not, not engage. <laughs> as long as it works for you, it doesn't work for children, though. I remember. I to me all the time. I'm like, this is this is a no go zone. And I gotta like, I gotta chill. Um, Tee it up. Um, yeah. I don't what? know. It's fear. Hush. I mean, I'm sure. I think it. Here's what I think. I think everything works on everyone. It just depends on what works for you if that makes sense so like i think time out will work on some kids and it doesn't work on some kids and but you know vice versa so i think it's just a matter of being willing and open to experimenting and seeing what what is your thing and what works for you like some some people like you know therapy is like amazing for them and some people are like i've done therapy for years and nothing's working you know so yeah well there's an old saying it works if you work it I mean, anything yeah. is that way. Anything is that way. Yeah. If you work it, yeah. if you truly dedicate yourself to reprogramming how we are, the results will be there. That's what I have found in my experience is uh, yeah. if I just give a half-ass effort, then the half-ass is going to come back and those will be the results. So yeah, the, it, right? yeah, exactly. Now, how about in your own life? I mean, I know you help other people. I do the same thing, but we also have our lives to live and we have yeah. our difficulties and you also have experienced divorce, even though you're a divorce coach. Yeah. And um, what have you learned in that process? Of healing, like what works for me? Yeah. <laughs> I so what I have learned is like you want to almost do the exact opposite of what you want to do so like when you are in the throes of feeling your absolute worst at your rock bottom you don't want to do anything right but the the secret sauce if you will is you actually have to do stuff right like meaning like you need to get out of your house you need to get into the sunshine you need to go on walks you need to if you live someplace cold and you can't do that you need to just like go and be with friends you need to get support you need to start living your life in a new way which is the exact opposite of what you want to do when you're in it right when you're in it you yeah. just you want to hide and isolate yeah that. yeah um but what i have found which always collapses time for my clients and for me is to actually be in action 
action is a is a is a great thing. The, the head is a bad neighborhood. You don't want to go in alone. And that's the right. thing is when we isolate, we're alone with our own thoughts and our own fears, and we're not working on those things because there's no one to hold us accountable. That's a big yeah. thing for me is what bothers me, I think even in modern society, is the lack of accountability and responsibility. I mean, that's like kind of the um, the the amazing part of having a coach, right? It's it's because then you are accountable to someone. Someone is holding you accountable. Did you do X, Y, Z that you said you were going to do X, Y, Z, right? And like yeah. a lot of people are saying like, okay, like I'll... I'll meditate today, right? Because like meditation is like an amazing way to get in a new headspace and like to like rejuvenate your own energy. Yeah. And it's like, oh, like in theory, it's like I'm gonna I'm gonna go meditate, right? And then like days go by and you're like, oh, I didn't have time. It's like, well, I'm gonna call bullshit. You did have time. We all have five, ten minutes to do it, right? <laughs> right, right. And it's good. like you just didn't want to, right? You didn't yeah. you didn't make it a priority. And like and then if you have Someone who's actually holding you accountable, who's not a friend, because a friend is different. A friend's going to let things slide. They're going to, um, they're going to, they're going to placate you in a way, even yeah. if they don't mean to. Like they're, you know, it's just it's different. Yeah, people don't. They want to rock the boat. People don't like conflict, and it's conflict if you yeah. challenge someone. Or, but you have a choice. You can enable or challenge. Mm -hmm. I choose challenge, and a lot of people don't like me for it. <laughs> so they find that to be the case. Or they need it, right? They, what's that? They might not like it, but they might need it. Well, they they certainly, I would say, probably 100% of the time need it because if they're yeah. off on their own devices and their own patterns and habits, obviously it's not getting them anywhere because they're there. <laughs> they're in this place of right. trauma or whatever it is. So I like to you know, lean in on the challenge and, oh, there are some people that if they live a lie, I was going to ask you about that is when people lie to you, mm -hmm. what's your response? I, I don't have a very good response and I understand I, that's my accountability is I, I get really, I get incensed and then it gets worse as they keep on going with the lie and increasing the line and blaming and deflecting. Ooh. Oh, I'm not very good with that. I think when people lie, you have to look at it and realize it's not personal, right? Yeah. Like people are lying because of something that's going on within them, um, something to do with their character. It's it really has nothing to do with you per se, um, and it's tricky to not take it personal, right? Because it's yeah, it, it feels very personal. It feels like they're doing it to you, but they're they're not, right? Yeah. Um, and then just to kind of that's where you like you know we get a, we, we have a choice and everything that we get to do right it's like do i want to be surrounded by someone who's lying to me and like what is what's your takeaway from it and like why are you in a relationship with someone who is lying like and it depends what the lie is right like you know your your kids are going to tell you white lies all the time you're not going to like stop being their parent because they'll tell you a white lie right it's like then that's like a learning lesson okay like here you go um, but there's all different kinds of levels of lying for sure. And I think, I think the thing with lying that like people get wrong is then, then you start to question everything that happened before and you don't trust what's going to happen in the future. I had it happen yesterday, actually in therapy with my son, who's going mm -hmm. through difficulties right now because of our divorce. Yeah. I mean, I say because, I mean, that's my opinion. That's my, I believe that could be the case. It probably is. He was a straight A student that is far from it right now. And mm -hmm. I was trying to talk to the therapist about these things. I could not believe the way she accepted his lies and wouldn't listen to the father who's going, no, it, this is what's happening. She goes, oh, I agree with him. I go, well, you weren't there. How could you agree with him? And I was going out of my mind and I was starting to get incensed because it was this challenge. I'm going, no, the baseline is let's get to the baseline of the facts. Okay. And also mm -hmm. the rules of my house. I have rules. Yeah. They're not your rules. And then I found out she doesn't have children. And, mm. and she got angry with me. She goes, that doesn't make a difference. And I said, yes, it does. Because you're mm -hmm. all theoretical now, which I think mm -hmm. is a big problem in society with the timeouts and all the coddling children and not disciplining. Mm -hmm. The word discipline is now called abuse and all those things. I think we're wandering into gray territory that's not good for us. I think it's great to challenge. It's great to hold people accountable. 
and and really? this is what I want to teach the kids. And she was doing the opposite. Mm, I mean, the yeah. opposite, fighting me and like in front of him. And I was like, "You're disrespecting me." She goes, "No, I'm not." I said, like, "It was really, it was quite a challenge for me to not become." I'm I'm Philadelphia, but I'm also spiritual, so I'm stuck between Namaste and kiss my ass. That's like where I live in that zone. And I was, I went, in, I, went I, went, I, I was, I'm sometimes in the middle and sometimes I was in kiss my ass zone yesterday with this therapist. And yeah. it was really, really, uh, it was a challenge for me to remain, uh, serene. So now the more I got going, the more she got to say, this is what you show your kid. You see mm. what I mean? The rock and yeah. the hard place. Yeah, I mean, I I always find it fascinating when there's a like a marriage and family therapist who's never been married and doesn't have kids. Yeah, like I don't get yeah. it. Like, like, like I get it. like you you went to school, and I have the utmost respect for, for the medical profession and all of that. Right. It's like there is something about actually living it and being through it. It's just like a divorce coach that hasn't been divorced. Yeah. Right, you, you have absolutely no idea what it's doing. And you and you've lived it. I've lived it. So whatever I've lived, I give to people and say, "This is my experience, and this is where the mm-hmm. transformation took place. This is where right. something wonderful took place, and all that." And there are great examples of that. But mm-hmm. someone who's coming from just an education, which is just a passing yeah. passing on of theory, I don't mm-hmm. think, I don't think this is valuable. As someone like you, if I went to you, which I wish I did, by the way, or, or, mm-hmm. I wish I came to you originally. <laughs> <laughs> with, with this divorce because it was it was very sudden it was there was a lot of lot going on but i wish i went to you because you can also share your stuff now i would like you to, uh, we, we, time, we, we go sure. we go deep on this show by the way so okay uh, so so we're gonna go deep i want to know one of the things you learned in your divorce that you now get to pass on to someone else like a lesson learned on you though not him I assume what it was a, I assume it was, I assume it was a him that you were married to. It was. We got to get so many days and things like this. <laughs> yes, no, I was I'm married. Very, I'm, I'm, so what do you mean by like that was on me? Something that I learned. Something that only you learned that had nothing to do with him. Like in other words, uh, people say stuff like, "I believe they're deflecting when they go." Well, I learned how to like draw a boundary because of. But you're basically saying, "Oh, it was him that I have to draw the boundary for." But I want to know in personal life uh, these discoveries that we have. Like, I've got a lot of them I could share with you, but I mean, of of mea culpa. Like, the, this is like something I regret or something I w- I could learn from this from this mistake. I, wanna- I do differently now that I learned. You what? Something that I do differently now that I learned through. Yeah. Let me hear it. Dis- I'm going to hear a discovery based on you falling in your face, or you having a surrender, or you having a, yeah. a misstep, or, or or what's that? Oh, great! I, I love it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I think one. I mean, I was really young when I got married. I was I was 26. I was 40 when I got divorced. Um, and I think I thought I knew it all. Right. I, th- I mean, yeah. I personally was like, there are moments where I'm like, I should have tried harder. And that's like, that's something I pass on to all of my clients who are in the, should I say, or should I go phase? Cause that's like, yeah. I, I kind of classify my clients in three different groups. There's the, should I say, or should I go? They're like struggling. Right. Yeah. Um, they're that I'm in the middle of my divorce, please help. And they're, I just got divorced. Now what am I going to do? <laughs> Right. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like everyone's in like one of those boxes. So if you're in the should I stay or should I go, one of my main things is like you want to cross all your T's, dot all your I's, and like really truly give this marriage a chance. If if that's what you're like, if you're really truly confused, I was very confused on like what to do. I yeah. had three kids. I was like, and I I think I just like gave up before, and I'm not, like. In hindsight, he's not my person, and like we would have ended up divorcing things. Uh, yeah. But I, I feel like I could have tried harder, and like maybe that would have changed things. Maybe it wouldn't have, but like most likely not. But I, I just like that's probably one of my biggest regrets not my divorce. I, I uh, can I reframe that for a second on based on my own please. life, and you can tell me if this yeah. is wrong. 
It's really based on yourself, though, self discoveries having nothing to do with the person or even the marriage. It's like, I wish I would have tried harder to work on myself to find out why I quit so easily, why I don't try as hard, Mm -hmm. why I don't tell the truth. All of those things Mm -hmm. are these discoveries that happen that you bring into, you'll bring it into your next marriage, so you might as well get it now. You know, I mean, yeah. might as well get these discoveries yeah. now. So you're you're like not regret because you don't regret the past. You know, no, it's not I, a good I, idea I, to ever regret. It's but it's a good idea to learn and 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 grow yeah, from whatever that opportunity is. Right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, I also think like something I learned through the process is we're always growing. We're always evolving and it's yeah. like lean in hard on yourself and like yeah. figure learn you and learn what you love and learn who you are as it kind of goes hand in hand, right? Learn who you are so that you can really come out of it thriving. Right. Cause like what, what I see so many people do is they fall victim and they get in the throes of like the sadness and the heartache and the arguing and the conflict and the this, and they just want to win. Right. It's like all about winning and it's not An illusion. Winning. <laughs> You it's never just, win. <laughs> but no one wins. But let's be honest. No. In divorce, no one wins. No so, one so wins. Just, but you win if you surrender. If you surrender your ego, surrender outcomes, surrender results, that's how you win because now you're in the present. You're in the now. I, I you're think in the you self-discovery. If you What's learn that? who you are. I, I truly think you win if you learn who you are. And that's you, right. And you learn about you and you learn who you, like what you love and you learn, you know, I, um, I just recently went through a breakup and like, I, my whole thing was like, I just want to come out the other side and be a better human. Right. Like this has nothing to do with like who this person is and why it didn't work out. But like, if I can look at that relationship and look at what was good about it, what was bad about it and how can I be a better partner in the future, you win because you're going to be happier in the future. future. I, I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. Every time is an opportunity um, I actually have an acronym for ego is evading growth opportunity. Mm-hmm. And I evade it with my ego, like trying to win or trying to look good or trying to be right. And all those things are things that are never going to work in the future or even in the now. It doesn't work in the long run because it, you're always caught. You're always going to get caught. If you don't tell the truth, the absolute truth, and go to some divine source of truth, it's mm-hmm. it's going to come back to bite and it happens to me all the time there's, there's yeah. no there's no I mean, cheating there's, there's, no, there's no shortcuts there's no cheating you got to dig no. in dig into yourself I, I that's what i gotta i gotta keep digging and digging like even yesterday when i'm having this argument with this therapist i mean i couldn't even believe her attitude but i have to look at mine too it's like it's a reflection it's back and forth i gotta go oh man yeah. you must be coming from some some uh some anger yourself because you're watching this she looked like she had hatred in her eyes <laughs> really and i'm going oh boy this is and then i got like be confronted. yeah stop. what's that she didn't want to be confronted she didn't want she, did, to- she, she did not she did not want me saying <laughs> my you know again i was a little maybe a little harsh when i said you're not married are you you know you don't have kids do you so then how do you know <laughs> and so i was like and she got challenged and it came back at me and you know and i'll i'll now this is part of my growth i don't know if you're this way as well i'll go back and apologize i'll learn i breathe and i meditate and i contemplate and then come yeah. back and and make it better at least for me and forgive myself for those things i think that, do, i mean do, do this is huge do you operate from a space of forgiveness? Do you teach Absolutely. that to your? Do you? And That's tell like people. one of the first things I like do if I'm in a hard place. Like, who do I need to forgive? Often, it's myself. <laughs> That's right. Well, tell us you what know? tell us what that means because again, a lot of times we'll see hear this in books or read this in books and or some or a speaker or whatever. Tell us what your version of of forgiveness, like maybe even an example in your life. That's always works best for me. Is like. How has it worked for you when you forgave yourself for X, Y, or Z? And then what were the results of that? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, for me personally, like sometimes if you're in a relationship, sometimes you stay too long. Sometimes you don't stay long enough, right? Like there's, I think like that's like the common themes I see a lot. A lot of people have like a lot of shame, a lot of guilt around divorce. And it's forgiving yourself for like whatever it is that you need to forgive yourself for, right? So, um, and, and sometimes it like here's the thing about forgiveness: it's not for anyone else; it's always for you. Yeah. 
point being that like if you are angry at someone you are energetically holding yeah. on to all of that anger mm-hmm. right yeah. we're walking around we are we are we're just energy right like you can feel my energy through the screen i can feel yours right like we are walking around with all this resentment all this anger all this hurt all this pain that's how you are showing up in the world and you project right? it you project it onto others then yeah yeah so exactly. if you don't want to be this angry horrible awful person you have to forgive and the forgiveness right. is for you. You don't ever have to go to that person and be like, I forgive you. Like, and, and that doesn't mean what they did turns to be okay or right or anything, which is another thing that yeah. people get hung up on a lot. Yeah, yeah, right. And it's also passive aggressive too. I forgive you. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's mm-hmm. passive aggressive. You know what I mean? Because right. you say, yeah. you did wrong and I'm going to forgive you for it. That's mm-hmm. not how it works. No, it's like, I want to, I want to feel my best and holding on to the anger is holding me back and i can't go to my next level whatever your next level is until i actually embrace the forgiveness of like whoever you're forgiving whether it be yourself or someone else did the best they could in the moment that that they had right and it's like accepting that and loving that and loving yourself through those moments will get you to the other side a bajillion times faster I'm going to blow back on one little thing that you said. I agree that it's about us. Forgiveness is about us. But you, I think you said, you tell me if I'm wrong, that it's not about the other person. For my experience, it is also about them. Not uh, you know, initially, and that's not the key, but it does release them as well. Because energetically, if you're holding on to something, you are helping them by releasing them with that forgiveness, first of self and then of them. And I think that really... So t- tell me about that. Am I hearing you? Uh, am I debating you here? <laughs> a little bit. I, yeah. When I say it's not for them, it's not. Like when you are forgiving, you are doing it for yourself, right? You only, are, only. Oh, you're saying only. Yeah. Okay. Like I think I'm, like I'm saying, I'm saying they, ha- <laughs> they have their own journey that you are not yeah. a part of anymore. And like they, they can take their journey and do what they need on their own. Right. So I think forgiveness, like, you you can go to the person and say I forgive you and like if that and like is what needs to be done for whatever reason if that if that feels in alignment to you then by all means like go and do it. And, you- and, and, yeah. Energetically, they don't even need to see it or or hear it. Yeah. Well, I'm saying no. energetically, if I do that, that release really helps. In my in my because oh, um, it like. Ah, I think they, I'll, they I'll, 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 I'm going to fight you back on this one. Yeah. <laughs> Put them up. Their own Put them journey. up. <laughs> yeah. They're on their own. Like, Cause they might not be ready for that release. Right. Like we don't know I, where they, but, but that helps get them to their release. If you release maybe. first, not maybe I've had this experience many times when I, I made, I made this huge amends. Like uh, I wrote a 22 page letter to my ex-wife and it was such a relief for me and it was a forgiving letter you know it was all i expressed all mea culpa not one word of not one zinger about her and it released all of us it released the kids it released her we actually spent a lot of time together and it was wonderful and by the way you are always with this person if you have children together so i disagree with that as well you are you are connected with them in some way you can't you just right. ig- ignore there's exchanges there's whatever it is there's there's planning <laughs> now i personally would rather have it be even more connection but that's not her <laughs> she, that's not her choice i would like more yeah. i like game nights and dinners and everything else let's show the kids we can have birthday parties together and all of that we can get along we're just not going to be married so I, how do you feel about that i mean it's it's a, it's a it's like almost controversial on on that take is my take is i want them i want to be an example to them i i wanted to be an example to stay married but i couldn't help that but i also want to be an example that they can see responsibility accountability forgiveness all of those things and that's part of it though is let's get along and have them see that so they've seen the fighting that's possible right uh, maybe not do is control what you do Right, That's like right. I mean, it'd be yeah. amazing if every divorced couple got along like that, right? Like, oh my yeah. gosh, great! Like, you're still like a family without being married, right? Amazing, but the the truth is, most 
divorced couples cannot do that. Do, do some? Absolutely. Right. There's always the unicorn yeah. out there yeah. that can do it. Um, I have some clients that are amazing at it, but the, it's, it, it's, it's like any relationship. It's fluid. It's going to change, right? Like yeah. someone gets in a relationship and then it changes someone, you know, whatever pisses the other person off and then it changes. It's like, it's like anything, but it's actually like even more emotional. Cause like you guys, did love each other now you're not in a relationship but you still have kids together and like there's all these different layers to it right there are so layers yeah i think what's important and like the most important takeaway is that you control you and that like, you show up as the best version of yourself for your kids at all times whatever yeah. that looks like with your ex or without your ex like you can't always control that because you can't control your ex my best version of myself is generous i mean okay to a fault okay to a fault and has been and taken advantage of but then again if i'm accountable no i'm not being taken advantage i'm not a victim but mm -hmm. i want them to see that and i believe and i've seen it ha work sometimes with my ex-wife that it does it, it it jostles something in her spirit the spirit is now closed and it's dark and it's you know a lot of hate and Am I going to come back with more darkness and more hate and more resentment? No, I'm not going to. I have to come back. For, I have to come. And I do. I wander in there. And, you know, how dare you do that to me? But if I mm -hmm. keep coming from that space, it invites that energy to come back from her. Certainly, yeah. certainly the other one doesn't work. You know, Stop doing that. Or, you know, you're yeah. bad. You know, no, that's worse. That's why she's probably out of here. You know, it's like, it's like telling her what to do, you know, telling her or acting yeah. like I'm so arrogant that I have the answers, uh, but you know, mm -hmm. I'm having you over a game night. You don't invite me, you know, that kind of stuff. That's the arrogance that takes place. It's probably not. It's definitely one of the reasons that we're not together. So there's the lesson I have to keep learning, but I do believe in energy. I, I, uh, that's the I, universal law of attraction. That's like the basics here. You know, exactly. I like energy, like energy. So, so you're you're divorced for how how long you've been have you been divorced? Seven years. Seven years, and you and you you just broke up with someone you were dating, not married mm -hmm. to, you, right? Mm -hmm. And how's it going out there? It's it's isn't it? Do you? I want to talk about this. This is a whole little switch here. This, <gasps> this went from a divorce. You're a divorce coach, but. You know, I know you're not a dating coach, but personally, I have you found <laughs> Yeah, not not for me. I'm not exaggerating. L listen to this. You you're, you're going to think I'm make, you know I'm a comedian. I'm I, I'm going to not make a joke here. I dated All right, so so three in a row had to blow into a breathalyzer tube to start their car because they Stop had, it. I, Hold on. It gets worse. I could prove this with a photo from taken yesterday. <laughs> when, when do you see this? When do you hear this? So then, so there we go. You got a bad picker. And then I pick up another one. She goes, I'm at a job interview near you. And I pick her up and she puts her suitcase in the back of my car. She goes, I have no place to live and I have no money. And I'm going, what, what, what? She goes, I just got out of rehab. And, but anyway, so did that one. That doesn't even count on the breathalyzer. Then I ask another, and then I go out with another one last minute. Hey, thanks for going. I went to a concert last minute. She, and I told her the story. She goes, well, guess what? You might laugh. Me too. A fourth one in a row I had to blow into a tube, right? No, I'm not kidding you when I tell you this. I went on a breakfast date yesterday. A breakfast date, and she had a blow into one. Did you have a fifth one? I took a picture of it. Oh my god! What did it do? Eyes? What? See, she pulled up in the car, and I'm like, "Let me see that thing." <laughs> <laughs> was it because they get DUIs? Is that why they get they have? Yes, they that's what I'm saying. They're yeah. alcoholics. Yeah. Here it is. Here it is. I don't know if you can see that. There is. That's on her front seat. <laughs> I swear to God. Um, oh, the car. Yeah. Oh my. Like her oh car. My God. And she oh can't my start a car unless she blows in there. She's got to blow. So, so I'm, I am, I uh, am uh, alcohol free. So I guess I could be their enabler and like blow into the tube for them. I don't know if it detects your breath or bl blood type or whatever. But. Interesting that you're like attracting all these people and you're alcohol free. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? And I had another yeah. one that said, I went on a great date, and she said, I can't date you because you don't drink. Oh, so no I way. Know what the hell is going on here? But I, the reason I bring it up is the law of attraction. So, yeah, that's so that's that's being, up. <laughs> exactly. So, so we're transparent and honest here. That's what I do on this, still standing up because we're standing up through, we're resilient. We get through. <laughs> what do you attract? <laughs> what, what, what do you tend to attract? And what are you attracting these days? 
I attract a lot of emotionally unavailable men. <laughs> <laughs> it's like across the board. I'm like, oh, there's another one. <laughs> there's another uh, one. <laughs> I hear this about guys. I'm like, but here's the thing. Like, if I'm attracting that at some point, like, I have to look inward and be like, I'm somewhat unemotionally, emotionally unavailable as well. Otherwise, I wouldn't uh, be. Like, yeah. Now, I'm going to do one little instinct thing. You're also probably very particular and, well, I don't like the word picky, but for lack of another word, because I'm sleepless. Uh, so we'll go with picky. You're probably very, very, uh, you, 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 very discerning about who you even go on a date with. Am I correct about that? You're not just dating around. I haven't gone on very many dates since I went yeah. through this breakup. So I, I don't really know. I'm not like, I'm not really place to really be dating yet um they have gone what, on that uh, they've been a disaster what you were what? you were echoing what did you say you're not ready to is that what you said i haven't really started really throwing myself fully i want to i want to talk about this then we'll get back to divorce okay i want to talk about this because i i've had a few that also say i'm not ready even though we went on a good date or whatever that anyway i'm i'm gonna blow back on that and say yeah you are i think we're all ready at all times it's like, when, no. when, when does that time arrive then? What does that look like? I think it's, again, it's, I think it's, a, it's an idea and a concept, but I don't know that it's true. I think we're always, at, on, a, on the spot, you can be ready for anything. Uh, on the spot, you can go, okay, I'm now available. I'm now ready. I'm now prepared energetically to take in the love that I want in my life. It's a, it's a moment. It doesn't happen like down the road. I mean, is that what you're trying to say? Is like, well, maybe down the road. And where are you working towards that place? I think, I think it's a yes and. I think, look, if like the most amazing man walked into my life right now and was like, I'm here, I probably would at least entertain it. Right. I wouldn't okay. be like, yeah, oh, get away. But I would do it very differently than I've done in the past. And I would go way slower. Right. Cause, cause my heart's still healing. Like, I mean, I just went through this breakup in August. It's like, it's still pretty fresh to me. And like, I'm still okay. kind of putting the pieces of my heart back together. So it's like, and I don't think that's fair to do to like to, to bring into a new relationship right that, that's me personally like i i think some people are like let me just hop into another relationship and heal and i don't i don't actually think you really do the healing and i don't really think you learn your lessons because you've almost just escaped the pain of the breakup right you're just like let me just let me just distract myself with a new person which by the way i've done a million times i'm not judging <laughs> but i'm just doing it differently this time because i i don't want that those past pains and that past hurt to resurface in my next relationship. I want to like take time and everyone, like there's no like magic timeline. Like, I don't think there's like, Oh, it's been six months. You should be healed. Or like, it's been two months. You should go back out and date. Like, I think yeah, it's a very yeah. personal opinion and it's a very personal feeling. So that's why, I, that's why I say, yeah. would you say it's a conscious awareness? It's a conscious awareness yeah. of, who, of who you yeah. are in that moment and who you are today you know, might yeah. be different tomorrow. You know, I, I, like I can wake I like, up tomorrow. I like, and be like, hey, I'm down. Let's do this. Like I'm ready, right? Or I, like I mean, and I can't say that it's like I'm like. A couple months ago, I was like, "Don't, don't come near me." Like I don't want, <laughs> I don't want nothing to do with any man. I'm like, "Don't come near me." Like I'm slowly opening myself back up to that possibility because, like, I truly believe in love and like i don't think we should be doing this life alone and like i know you have to get back out there to find your person right like so i'm yeah. very aware in that sense but i'm also just like all right like i i really just got my heart like destroyed by someone so i'm like i'm going slow i'm like all right like let's take it yeah, one yeah. day at a time and see where we see where we get there, and like there, there, if someone walks in that i'm like wow like i you know yeah. want to explore this like i'm not going to deny myself that either but i'm going to go really slow all right. Well, you should see me. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna talk to you off the air. And talk to you about the being open. And I'm gonna get back to the divorce now. To uh, your divorce coaching. Mm -hmm. Do you tend to lean into you two should work harder? Is there, should I stay or should I go? Yeah. Maybe? Do you do you tend to energetically when you're working with someone? No. No, you tend no. to say you should split. No, 
I don't okay. actually use either or. What, this is what I always say to anyone that's in this like gray area. Yeah. Stop trying to figure it out. Because uh-huh. if you put this pressure on yourself, you're you're going to keep spinning. So what I say and what I encourage anyone in this area to do is to, to slow your roll, first of all. Lean in on yourself, heal yourself, figure yourself out. You will very organically see if this person's for you or not. And like, if you want to work harder or not, as you start to heal, you will level up and they will either want to match you up here or not. And you'll go like, it happens all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to say something about men and women, how different we are. That process is different for men than it is women. I mean, mm-hmm. in, in defiant, definitely a big time. It's a, it's a big difference on how we approach our lives. Like self-care for a woman, to me, I'm going to give you my male feedback now. Yeah. It can lean into selfishness. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, because you're going, oh, I'm, 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 I'm not going to do those things because I have drawn my boundaries and I've been coached by other women to draw those boundaries mm-hmm. and get my sovereign freedom and get out of my golden cage. That's a quote, by the way, from my ex-wife. Golden cage she was in. So being coached on you're in a golden cage, you got to take care of yourself. Now, that person who's coaching is not there for <laughs> the actuality is there's no golden cage. There's no complete freedom. And, but they're going to coach based on what they're told. That's mm-hmm. the thing where the accountability comes in. Is a lot of people will tell a story so that it fits them being able to justify getting out. Mm-hmm. Let me, let me pick out, let me cherry pick the bad stuff. And then the other person mm-hmm. should be, you better get out of there. I remember there was a mm-hmm. time, there was a time, um, uh, leading up to the divorce where she was like claiming that she needed a safe house. Literally, I and mean, the people were feeding back to her, get out, I'll find you a safe house. I'm like, what? Not mm-hmm. me or the kids weren't experiencing any of that. It's in the mind. Then it gets fed mm-hmm. by the people you go to that enable that. And that's mm-hmm. where the danger is. And I'm wondering, do you challenge people on where they go, where they're getting their feedback from? Do you challenge them to get better themselves and work on being of service to the whole that's some of the stuff that I'm into. I don't yeah. know if it's a male trait or what, but I'm like, be of service to the whole. Like, look at the kids. Look at, you know, not only make it about, I got to go get more pedicures <laughs> or whatever. I think that's self-love. It's not about, like, it's, I mean, what I, I consider self-love is, like, learning it, learning and loving yourself, right? So it's not about the pedicures, the manicures, the the massages, like, all of that. Like, that that's all nice. Yeah. Right, but yeah, like that's right. also a subtle bullshit. Like, what real, truly self love is is like, okay, like let's let's figure out our life. Like, let's figure out what is best. Right? Not, and I actually don't believe in like staying for the kids. Like, I I think that's um, you're doing a disservice to your children to stay for your kids. But that's a whole other story. Um, if you guys don't actually love each other, you're not showing your kids love. You're not, and like, and they're gonna grow up to model. To that, model that, what that's that's stuff. if that's the case, though. Well, yeah. If, that, if that's if the case, out, and they're not in love with the person. That's the case. <laughs> yeah, but is it true? I I've ever heard of the. Uh, well, of, uh, by, I've, I've ever heard of Byron Katie? Do you know Byron Katie? Of course. I, well, I, not of course. A lot of people don't have any. They think it's a dude from the 16th century or whatever. Byron Katie. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. But one of the things she says is, is it true? Yeah. Can you know without a shadow of a doubt? What's that? Can you know without a shadow of a doubt? Exactly. And I think, yeah. I think that applies in all relationships. We build, up, we build up evidence that is a defeatist attitude. We pick the cherry pick the things that we're going to have somebody else that coaches us and says, you need to get out of there, honey. You need to go find yourself. That guy's doing it, but it's not. Is it true? And I, I know in my marriage, not true. These things, not true. Our perception, it might. Our perception. Matter. That's exactly right. That's exactly and like we're right. We're all living through our own lens, right? So, like, a a really masterful coach would show her other lenses. Like, can we look at it through this lens? Exactly. Can we see it through? It? Can Can you see how this might be a possibility? Yeah, and working, evidence to support those different possibilities, right? But not everyone 
does that. And not everyone is gifted a person in their life that can can see a bigger picture. I mean, very clearly, like sometimes we're we're with people who are like, I can only see it through this lens. And then they go, just like you said, to like their therapist or their coach and the coach is like, fuck out. Yeah, sounds terrible. You know, like get out. Yeah, exactly. Terrible. But there, there yeah. is other parts to it that they're missing or that they forgot. Or like, I mean, even me in my own life, like I'll had moments in the past couple of months where I'm like, gosh, I'm like, you know, I miss my ex, blah, 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 blah. No, my ex has been my ex-boyfriend. And they're like, well, you're forgetting about this and you're forgetting about this and you're forgetting about this. And you're I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you're right, you're right, you're right. Okay, okay, okay. And that's why I really encourage people to write down a pro and con list. It's like, there are moments, your our brains are crazy powerful, right? Where you're just going to play the highlight reel. Because like we want to believe they're this person on this pedestal, right? And in order to really let go of someone, you have to make them a real person. You have to see the bad and the good. Oh, yeah. Remember all the crazy things they did to you that you just like were like, it's okay because I love them, right? And then you're like, oh, no, that's not okay. That is not okay. <laughs> you know? Oh, it's such, it's such a perception thing, though, because then you go to the low light reel. Then you're making the person defend themselves and just going, wait, wait a minute. It's a low light reel. You're choosing these things that, you know, there's, these are sometimes human traits. They're just sometimes yeah. human. It could be something you're ignoring in yourself that you're projecting onto someone else. That's what I'm saying is like, I really believe in the real digging. You know, you got to dig, dig, dig inside of ourselves. I mean, and you- as a whole, it's, it's, it's a huge decision and it's a huge transition Like you got to see it all. And like, that's not something you can do in a day right it's like track track things over a period like i always say track things over six months as i have like a list of questions that i I give to my clients who are in this should i say should i go phase track it track how you're feeling track track what these answers are they will change on a week-to-week basis but you don't see that unless you track it tracking like journaling tracking amazing isn't the tracking different though with men and women isn't it a different tracking system it's the same i I asked the the men and the women the same question question same question but different answer i would believe that it's a perspective and a perception is different this is what i've discovered it's really really different i mean if i if i'm being coached by my buddies they're all like hey man you gotta you gotta step it up and i watch my ex get coached and it's like no you gotta step it out you got to get out you know, there isn't like you got to go in you got to go really look at yourself you got to look at your own stuff now how are you with um higher source higher power god source, whatever you want to call it, light how are you with that divinity and and all that and when you're coaching does it does it come into your coaching at all uh, um not really i i believe the universe has our back i believe that the you know, I mean, whatever anyone believes in, there is a, there is a higher power out there and we have to have faith and we have to have hope. And like, even when we don't have evidence for it, it's out there. And I definitely believe that everything's happening for us. We can't always see it. Um, but well, I, you're, but yeah, not- I, I have to understand. And for the first thing you said was no, but now you're saying, now you're saying yes. I mean, it, it is not, the universe. Like, part of my like, I'm not like sitting there talking about the universe and God or, no, or anything, but there is, I do believe in all of that. And it, it's probably in a Robin, but it's not like, it's not something I push on anything. Well, not push, but interwoven would be you're sharing that with them and something that yeah. you, you found the universe delivered for you. For instance, I always, Absolutely. I always respect and follow people when they're going to talk about their vulnerability to me, that's a superpower. When you've, you, you do you, do you bring your vulnerability to these situations? Yeah. What's that? Yeah. When you're coaching, you let them know your failures. You let them know your humble moments. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, that's, that's a good coach to me. I think, uh, I, I mean, and I, I always ask permission, you know, like some people just want it. I, I have a, a client currently who wants just to be all about, that person and does not want to hear anything about any like any kind of ex- real life examples like has no interest um but what i find really helps people is to not feel alone in a time where they feel like they're the only ones that are ever experiencing it um to be like oh she's gone through it and she's on the other side and she's happy 
And like, like, look, like I've, I've made mistakes. I've experienced that. I've done that. I've had this happen. And I experience, and like, sometimes it's real life stuff, right? Like, I mean, my clients who have been with me the past four ish months when I was going through my own breakup, like I was like, I was in it with them, you know, like my heart was broken. And I was like, this is, this is what's going on over here, you know? <laughs> And it's like, this is what I did to help myself today. This is how I have got out of my own funk. This is how I got out of my own way. This is how I'm feeling better as of today. Right. Um, yeah. And it's also like the, the reality, of, the, the reality of any kind of grief, whether it be, you know, they say divorce and death are the two most stressful things you'll ever go through in your whole life. Um I often think almost divorce might be worse because the person's still alive. It's not, there's no finality to it. You're still like seeing the person, yeah. right? You're like, yeah. you're trying to heal and like the person's still there. Um, and it's just and you have children, thing. children to add to it. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's way easy to get divorced without kids. I'm much easier uh -huh. to, with, without the kids. It's like, uh, that's the whole it's thing. A bad What's that? This is a bad breakup at that point. Yeah, well, when it, when it, when the kids are involved, I keep saying to myself, I could be wrong. You can tell me if I'm wrong about this. I just, I to me, it's them first. Like yeah. that, that's who I think of. Like like they, their needs to be tended to. I need to be an example for them. I want them to follow. Which is part of the problem with being divorced is I don't want that to happen to them in the future. I want them to work harder on and work harder on themselves, and therefore have you know much more bliss in our lives i think if we do have this universal thing the light the levity the whatever it is lo a great love whatever you want to deem it to be i think that's so much more powerful than these thoughts that get in our way i want to talk about one of your thoughts emotionally unavailable i've heard this about mostly men i've never heard <laughs> At least I've never been with my buddies going, she's emotionally unavailable. Uh, I, just can't, I, 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 can't, I can't crack her. I swear to God. She's, uh, she, she's just like a stone face. I was like, can you give me something? I've never had that conversation with my buddies. I've been around a while. So I want to know what it means to you, how it manifested with this guy who is emotionally unavailable. Because I've heard it, but I've only heard it from women towards men i think like emotional unavailability comes in a lot of forms like for the most part it's like like someone who like they, they want a relationship but they can't actually receive love and they don't actually give love right so it's like it stays at the surface so it's like let's go have a good time let's like enjoy each other's company but like when you want to get deep there's no depth because like they're shut down for okay. whatever whatever I'm I'm gonna I'm uh, I'm I'm gonna pile drive this one now. What does it mean? Let me hear an example of what it means when you say no depth or, or he's not uh, you know he's not sharing of himself. How does it sound? Give me an example of like okay. don't don't even use him. So if you want to not do that, whatever it is, I want to hear yeah. what it means. So talk to me like I'm a dummy because me most men are right. <laughs> so, talk to me like I'm emotionally unavailable and tell me what an available man looks like. You know what it looks like. Let's ha let's like my, my feelings are hurt. Can we have a conversation? And they avoid. Nope. Can't have a conversation. Like things start to get really um, real, meaning like, like you start to really develop like real, like real feelings. It's like, you're no longer, it's not just like fun and games. It's like real. And they fail. They're like, I'm out. Like, I, I don't want this. What does, that look, what does it look like? What does it look like? Bail? Are you silent? Or you're, you're standing in front of them? You're going to kill end it they're like it's like i mean a lot of like in dating in the dating world most things end around three or four months because that's when real feelings start to come up and like yeah. for an emotionally unavailable man they're like i don't want that i just want the fun i don't i don't want anything real i don't want anything to really develop because then i can get hurt it's it's it, it's based off of fear of abandonment i'm gonna i'm gonna reverse this just, okay. just to play with this. Okay. I find that men, these are all tendencies, obviously, in generalizations. I find that men have that same thing that comes back to them. But the woman who's trying to control the situation the way she wants it, that's being emotionally unavailable. But it's not deemed that. It's not labeled that because it's usually a guy who's not emotionally, he's not emotionally available. But I think that women sometimes use deflective methods to go into the other women, whatever it is, to, and, and blaming and saying he's emotionally unavailable, when in fact, maybe that's part of emotional un, uh, being emotionally unavailable. 
Do you think you agree with that? You mean like when a woman's trying to control a situation? Tries to control. I've seen it so many yeah. times. And and, you, and one little failure, there's these, there's these, I hate the word trigger, it's so overused, but it's, it's like a trap. It's like, what, what did I, what did I, the other day I said, I met somebody from the neighborhood online and I go, oh my God, you're in the neighborhood and you have a dog. Let's go walk the dog. And she goes, you're strong arming me. I'm like, it's like, it's like, she went off on this like uh, unbelievable tirade and i'm just going i'm enthusiastic i'm going hey that's really cool let's walk the dogs together you know that's my theory but she deemed it all to be like i guess emotion unavailable or whatever the guys are deemed to be or controlling or what she was another word she used something like strong arming or, or or threatening but whatever it was and do you how much do you think history plays into things like i've i've actually had situations where they're t- t- talking to me and i'm going but but th- that's not me you don't know me but i think it's based on, on, on like these memes that are inside of us of history like men have been oppressors for a long long time so therefore you get the label mm-hmm. you're an oppressor you get the yeah label and there's healed wounds there right yeah and they're just they're projecting it out onto you and you're I mean, that's where you have free will. You get to decide, like, oh, yeah, like, I'll, I accept that. Or you're like, "Mm -mm, that doesn't feel good to me. Yeah. Well, sometimes they tell you right away, it's a harbinger of things to come. When it's, when the, when the manipulation starts happening, you should have done this. You should have, you should have bought me flowers, you know, all these rules and regulations. Yeah. To me, that's not authentic because it's some, oh, you agree with that. Oh, you, uh, of course. Uh, what do you mean, of course? Most women, uh, not most, but a lot of say, you treat me like a queen. Well, what, 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 where, I, I had a conversation with someone. I'm going, well, how does that work? I mean, and what, and what, what happens to me? Am I the jester? Am I the court jester? Am I the king? Am I the prince? Am I the, you know, the, <laughs> the gruel giver? I mean, oh, I mean, look, women have their idea of how they want to be treated, right? And like right. men, have their idea of how they want to be treated. But like each person is coming into the relationship with their own shit period the end right right? and so it's like can you make these things work together are you are you in alignment or are you not right and like and and that's like that's all a part of it but like the the emotion availability of someone is dependent on how much healing they've done and how open they are to give love and receive love that's all it comes down to like a lot of people have had past traumas they haven't dealt with and they bring that into a new relationship and then people are like they get they they put up a wall that, that's ultimately what it is it's like have you ever or, or like someone's like one foot in one foot out and like energetically if like you're in tune with that like you'll feel it and you'll be like oh gosh like what why aren't you all in you know and, and it feels bad <laughs> like period at the end but here's the thing. There, there, uh, women have to have it as well because I wouldn't be attracted to someone who was emotionally unavailable if I wasn't somewhat emotionally unavailable myself. Oh, wow, that's great. Good, good self reflection. Like, I like that. We're, we're, I think women are just more aware. We're like, oh, that's they're shitty. Mi- oh, they're more aware. <laughs> yeah. But like, but like well, I'm probably. Hear this, Gianni, do you hear this? Well, they're, they're more aware than we are. We are. <laughs> we are. She proclaims it. She proclaims. I, her I, am. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to fundamentally disagree. I, I, I swear. I, and sometimes I think to myself, why was I, I was brought up with all females. So I really do think that that had a lot to do with my thinking, my believing, my, you know, my actions. I, it really does come from that place of like right out of the gate. I'm a feminist right out of the gate. I'm like, hey, you know, me too or whatever. I mean, but they look at me like, oh, there's a big white dude. 200 pounds six foot two intimidating mm-hmm. you know successful it's like they look at me going whoa whoa back off bro <laughs> you know it's like yeah so that's how they're looking at me because they see that and then there's mm-hmm. nothing one can do to have, have that corrected unless there's an openness for that alignment that you talked about right. and openness yeah. for hey no it's not a perfect fit it's not going to be a perfect fit and, le- and nothing's le- perfect and yeah, there is yeah. no perfect yes but it's never not perfect because it's a situation where it's not, it, there's a situation to grow. You have that opportunity yeah. every single time. 
when we look at ourselves and go, oh man, I think that was me trying to sabotage because I really, you know, I, but it's so much self type. I want one more thing I want to ask you. Our society these days, post COVID, during COVID, have you seen a switch of energy? Is it me, or have you seen a switch of energy where people... I mean, it's so much change, dark, right? Dark, so, yeah. dark, <laughs> dark, dark energy, dark. And, and like, mm. I'm, I'm on my fifth in a row as a blowing a breathalyzer tube. That's some alcoholism going on there. So, it's a, is the alcoholism increased? The drug addiction increased? I think it has. I think that people are in a really, really bad situation right now. Uh, and, the yeah. met, and the mental health support is not there. What's yeah, it? Exactly. You agree? Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Like yeah, worse yeah. than it, ever, and then and then our standards are so high that we're not meeting ourselves. Started, like, you know, let's we'll say that again. With wall, their guards are up. It's like it's a yeah. it's a weird it's a weird time. It's a really strange time to yeah. be a couple or be not a couple. It's both yeah. it's strange for and everyone is kind of like trying to trying to stand their ground and and you know it's, they have these ideas and concepts of the way it should be the way it looks and i think it i believe television is part of the problem this this idea of what romance is what's that i don't watch that much tv i don't either that's probably why i'm happy <laughs> <laughs> i am really I, cool idea like relationships from what they get from the movies like disney yeah. And it, right. they think that's that's reality, and it's not reality or reality shows. If you're following a Kardashian, yeah. you when you think that that's your answer, I'm going to go right. have fake lips or whatever it is. Oh, there's my mm -hmm. answer. It's always on the inside. I've mm -hmm. I've seen it time and time again. Keep working on our insides, and then hopefully the other person is as well, and you meet meet in there. I have to tell you, yeah. my relationship with with my ex wife was bliss for years. Uh, years, uh, 17 years, and most of those years were absolute joy and bliss because of one thing. She, she saw me for who I truly am, not what she mm -hmm. dictated me to be, and I saw her for who she truly is, not what I dictated her to be. And then mm -hmm. and that started to go that way. We, yeah. I only that's what happened. We both right? saw each other, the other part, the dark side. And then, mm. then it starts to exacerbate and gets worse and worse. And then now you're not looking at the person for who they truly are. I mean, she has things that she does. I'm going, wow, that's not you. But and then I defend mm -hmm. against it because it's very offensive. You know, whatever it is, it's not good. So it's, it's, like, it's like Star Wars. It's like Dark Side and all that. And we're all Jedi warriors here, Lisa. We're Jedi warriors. <laughs> we're bringing, bringing the light. So you have, you have a mastermind coming up. And I want, I, to hear, I want to hear about that because I might attend. Ooh, I love it. Are, gonna, yeah, are, so these, are, single, are we yeah. single women there? Are we going to see single women? <laughs> oh, that's awesome. We're either going through divorce or going through, oh. going through a divorce or they actually are divorced. Oh, um, that's um, not good though because they, then they're not ready. They have to have their <laughs> healing. <laughs> they're, not, they're not prepared. We're always healing. That's what we just <laughs> right. said. We are always <laughs> Really? This is the not important the time. Thing. I've got to grieve. I've got trauma. <laughs> so maybe it's not the best place. So all right. So uh, go ahead. So tell me about date, like you. You shouldn't date someone going through a divorce for at least a year. Like let, let them like live on their own for a year. Like like let them go do their like slut phase for a year. And then like if you're wanting a relationship, like after a year, it's fair game. But yeah, my but yeah, my is, is, is another way that wh women differ from men. There's the whole, let's get into, let's just be honest, there's the whole getting laid thing. I think men want to get laid a little more than women do. I too, I could be dead wrong. Great. I actually completely disagree with that. I think it's like very mutual. Like everyone wants good sex. Yeah, but 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 women will take much more time to get there. Like, no, I got to grieve for a while. I, Some people get right back into it. Well, you're, it you're in this whole grieving process. While you're into grieving and all that stuff, you're, there's no sex. The way, going, there's I no sex going on. Not to have sex. I said, don't get into a relationship. Don't like really date someone for a year. 
Well, I haven't seen any of those yet. that are just like, oh, I just want sex. I'm not, I'm not going to be in a relationship with you. In the places. <laughs> just wow. Well, we'll, we'll go off the You're air. You're looking at the places with people blowing and like things oh before they can rise. <laughs> like a friend with benefits or booty calls and all that. I, for, I, I just think like, I think yeah. there's a pl- there's plenty of women who don't want a relationship, but want a good companion. Okay. All right. Well. We'll leave it at that. Um, so tell me about the mastermind. <laughs> so tell me. The mastermind yeah. is starting yeah. in January. Um, I'm going to limit it to 15 people. So it's going to be pretty small. We're going to go for four months. And yeah, it's all about like, you're like, okay, like I'm ready to like feel good again. And like, I want to live a life of happiness and I don't want to be the victim. And I want to write this next chapter to be really just expansive and happy and abundant and yeah it's going to be really juicy and good and fun and usually my masterminds have the best best individuals possible and they all get super tight we have a private facebook group just for like the people who are in it um i'm in there coaching you said everyone left fi- and right, so like 15 that's the max 15 one five that's it wow that's that's very yeah. small because I, I like them to be intimate because like people get really raw, really honest. Um, the healing that's done there will like collapse years of your life. But people often are like, "That was like five years of therapy in one session." Like it's just like we go, we go real deep. Like it's like we don't, we don't mess around. We rewrite our stories. We like we do a lot of somatic work. It's they're they're really special. They're really amazing, and I'm super excited. About it. Wow, that's that's yeah. I'm, I'm gonna start my own mastermind. I, I need one of these. <laughs> <laughs> or, or maybe I'll maybe I'll go to yours. It sounds like it's all women, though. Um, so far, I'm not opposed to having men in it. Not opposed to having men in there. I don't have anyone in, right right now. Right what, now what about what about a sensitive man that grew up with all females? <laughs> I'll be one. Of, I'll be I'll be one of the gals anyway. Come, come, come forth. He we was, want you. I'll be, uh, he was emotionally unavailable. You should have left. <laughs> you know what? I have a <laughs> Those lot of men are all the students. same. What's that? <laughs> I have guy coaches come and like talk to the women, which like they love because like it's, it's important for women going through this to see that there are men that are working on themselves, that there are, there are men that are growing and healing and evolving just like they are, you know? And like, those are like, again, we all want like-minded individuals, right? So like getting into groups that like there are people that are going through what you're going through yeah. is so special and to bring in the opposite sex is amazing now that's what i'm gonna do for you i'm gonna be that guy i've done this my whole life i was always the friend there were always the girls who used the f word with me friend i was always the effing friend you know girls pee together the posse pee in high school the posse pee they all pee together the group they took me with them that's what a geek i was <laughs> i was the friend and they all talk about the bad guys anyway I want to be that guy. You know, I fixed up nine marriages in my life. I fixed up nine different couples. I'm really good at fixing up. I'm really good, I'm good at it for other people. <laughs> What's that? I'll fix you up. I am so good at fixing up, and that's a, that's, that's just the ones that got, that's just the ones that got married. Now, I'm not going to say they stayed together. I'm not going to say. That's what I said. I, I, I can't. I can't keep them together. Uh, you know, I just set it up. You knock it down, but. <laughs> Yeah, I just have this energy, you know, I'm a coach as well and, and and very intuitive and I will be there for you and your group to be the spy. I will be the guy spy. You can call me the guy spy. So I'm going to give you the, yeah, you're the F word. I'm going to give you the inside word on what dudes are thinking on how you can attract right. a guy. I'm going to tell you all this stuff because if you guys talk in once each other, you're not going to get it. It's like talking the same language and you go over across the world. They're not understanding what you're saying. I'm going to give you the, what's that? Women think so differently. Yeah, they do. They really do. And, they know. and now throw they's in there and, and uh, it's and all <laughs> that, that screws the whole thing up. But yeah, it's, it, it's, well, there's men are from Mars, women are from Venus or Vegas, wherever they're yeah. from, but so true. it's so true. It's so I will be there for your group to I, give I, you I, any, I, any question you have. I will answer any of the women who have a question about a man, bring me your stuff and I will be there for you to share my experience on what dudes are thinking because look i'm with them all the time i can tell you i go i golf with them that's
that's when all the stuff comes out. <laughs> you have the inside scoop. Oh, absolutely. On a golf course. Men love to be on a golf course. Talking about women. I'll let you know what they find bitchy. <laughs> I'll, I'll let you know that they don't want the complaining. I'll let you know how you, how you can lure them in. Okay. I'll let you know. So, and so good. That's, I'm, I'm going to be part of the mastermind now as a guest speaker. Okay. I'm the ins- what I call myself, the, 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 the inside guy, the guy, the guy, guy spy, spy. <laughs> the guy spy. I'm, yeah. the, I'm the guy spy. Well, Lisa, how can we get in touch with you for, if we're going through a divorce? Let's hope not, but um, Instagram, Lisa Miller coach, DM me, send me a message. Um, I give you my email address, but like, I don't check it very much. So DM me. That's, right. that's the easiest, best way to get a hold of me. Slide into the DMs. Yeah, I like that. It's been so long I've had sex that I, I need lube to slide into the DMs these days. <laughs> <laughs> it's been so long. So, was that bad? Was that inappropriate? See, I'm a male. I'm inappropriate sometimes. You all have to accept that. We're inappropriate. You, um, you need to fix your picker because it sounds like you're picking the wrong people i know wow is it bad i mean that, that's yeah. like, it's now turned into like joke when i someone texts me today they, they said oh you you have a bad picker you get you had four in a row and i'm going guess what there's a fifth one now <laughs> oh that's God. crazy that's it's crazy, so crazy. I just That's took a picture crazy. of it yesterday. I mean, I thought I had that picture, but yours is worse. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I, I, I'm always here to make people feel better about themselves. I appreciate that. I do. I do appreciate that. Because people walk away from my experiences. I had a really rough childhood, and they go, oof, man, I'm, mine's a piece of cake. This is awesome. <laughs> so I could be there for the women for that, too, for your mastermind. So we'll get in touch Perfect. with you there. I really appreciate you being here. You're so much fun, and and I would go to you if I needed a divorce coach. And let's hope I never do again. Let's hope I never right? see you again <laughs> on that level. We need to take your picture first. <laughs> I don't know if you know how to do that. I'll I'll get coached by you on that. But oof, but it's, it's it's obviously pretty bad. Well, anyway, thank you, Lisa. You're awesome. And. Thank you. uh, Remember, folks, it's called Still Standing Up. I, by the way, can't they give us like a little gift or something? Yeah, there's, that, there's, there's a little like, gift button. On the there's a little, little they, gift they, button. They to any yeah, we're doing this for nothing, all right? So, you know, give us a little something if you got something out. Yeah, uh, what, uh, 50 cents, a dollar, whatever? whatever yeah. Yeah. Kick something our way. What the hell? <laughs> we're here for them, right, Lisa? That's what we do. We coach, we help, we Thank assist, you. we guide. The Sherpa, the shift Sherpas over here. That's, that's what we're talking about. Help people shift to a better. We live in a very divided world right now. It's it's tough out there. So get some help, right? Go to us and get some help and add some levity. Oh, one more question. How much import, How much importance do you put on laughter? A lot. You do seem like a good laugher. I'm a good laugher. I love to laugh. You're not, you're not I that think laughter cures all sorts of things. Well, that's, I'm all about that. I've, my program is called Winning with Laughter. You, love it. you win every time you laugh. It shifts all your consciousnesses to love, light, and levity, right? That's where we should all live. I want to concentrate on oh, I'll bring that to your group, too, by the way. Love it. All these women are in there going, oh, I'm sick of this guy. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm going to go, come on, let's laugh about it. It's on you. <laughs> so, All right, Lisa, I appreciate you being here. Thank you. Everybody else, keep following me and all that. Is that what I tell them? Follow me. I'm so bad at that stuff. Oh, my God. Well, thank you. Lisa. It was a real pleasure. I hope, I hope you had fun. Great time. Thank you. See ya.